हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर अनिल जोशी ओनर ऑफ द पोर्टल कॉमर्स फंडा डॉट कॉम एंड आई हैव द फेसबुक पेज ऑल्सो बाय द सेम नेम सो डू कीप विजिटिंग माय फेसबुक पेज कॉमर्स फंडा सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स व्हिच इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन योर कंपनी अकाउंट्स सो वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इक्विटी शेयर्स सो डोंट थिंक अबाउट प्रेफरेंस शेयर्स हियर सो वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स you know primarily it consists of two methods it it can be calculated by a two methods one is your net asset value method which is also called as intrinsic value method and the second part is called yield method there is third one which is fair value method but it is again uh, you know a derivative of these two methods only so i'll come to that fair value method later so let me explain the objective of this video is to cal to explain to you the basic concepts in each of these methods net asset value method or the intrinsic value method it is nothing but based on the assets belonging to the shareholders to the equity shareholders so if i say that the overall net assets belonging to the equity shareholders value is say 50 lakhs that is the net asset value belonging to the equity shareholders and there are 1 lakh equity shares in the company that means per share what is the value 50 rupees that is nothing but your intrinsic value so then the question is how do you calculate this part number of equity shares will be there in the question so how do you calculate the net assets value belonging to the equity shareholders now look at visualize the balance sheet and try to think how can we calculate the net asset value belonging to the equity shareholders total assets minus when i say total assets don't consider fictitious assets minus all third party liabilities and since we are talking about equity shares sometimes there may be preference share capital also so even that also you have to reduce so remaining is your net asset value for equity shareholders correct there is another way you can calculate the net asset value belonging to the equity shareholders and that is because you know balance sheet always the two sides tally right so you can calculate it either ways so your another way to calculate the net asset value will be your equity share capital plus reserves and surplus what remains is all this preference share capital third party liabilities third party liabilities will include your non current liabilities as well as current liabilities and your total assets non current assets and current assets so either do this way or do this way you will get the same answer that is your net asset value belonging to the equity shareholders correct so that number divided by the number of equity shares is nothing but your value of equity share as per intrinsic value method now this net asset value can be calculated in three ways the and i am talking about the amounts which amounts you should take either you can take the balance sheet amounts which is which are the book values or you can take the fair values those are the revalued amounts or you can take the realizable values if you are in the process of liquidating the company then at the time of liquidation of the company what do you do you sell off the assets and you realize the money so then in that case there is no point in taking the book values there is no point in taking the fair values 
because now what the company is going to get or what is important for the company or the equity shareholders is how much amount they get by selling the, uh, the assets. So that is why in that case you will take realizable values. For investment organizations typically you consider the book values. However, if those book values are materially significantly different as compared to the market values, then you may go for fair values, right? So, depending on what is the end objective of your valuation, you will follow one of these, correct? The formula for the net asset value for equity shares, shareholders is what we discussed earlier. These are the different types of amounts that you can take to calculate by that formula. Now there is a prop, there is a limitation in net asset value method and that is, you see for a going concern, what is the asset value that belongs to the equity shareholders is not that much significant because what is significant for the shareholders, the profit part, what are the returns that they are going to get. So therefore, typically for a going concern, usually yield method is followed. So yield method, yield means what? The returns. So again, the returns can be looked at in two ways. The dividend or the profit. Profit belongs to the equity shareholders. Dividend also is paid to the equity shareholders. We are not talking about preference shares here, right? So either ways you can look at the returns. Now, when do you follow dividend method? When do you follow profit method? If you are a small shareholder, if you are a retail investor, then you will primarily, you will give more importance to dividend. But if you are a strategic investor, then for you what is more important is the profit and not the dividend. So depending again on who you are, you will either take dividend or profit. Profit available to the equity shareholders. So that will be nothing but the profit after tax. minus transfer to reserves if any okay so here sorry you will not take the transfer to reserves we are talking about profit so profit after tax minus the preference dividend there may be preference shares also so whatever preference dividend is to be paid you deduct that from profit after tax the amount that remains is nothing but the profit available for equity shareholders. Or you take straight away the dividend to the equity shareholders. Now once you take this, how to calculate the value of equity shares that we will see now. So let me give you a simple example that if I say that the dividend per share is say 3 rupees. This is the dividend. And the market rate of dividend is say 10 percent. This is usually the rate of dividend that is earned in the industry. The industry of this particular company. So if this is a uh, you know a company making soaps then you will take the industry of the industry average of FMCG right fast moving consumer goods. So, so on an average that is 10 percent. That means what you are saying is that if in this company I am getting 3 rupees dividend. If I want to in earn this same 3 rupees outside the company in the market and I know that you know the rate of dividend that I am likely to earn is 10 percent. That means how much amount I will have to invest in order to earn 3 rupees. I will have to invest 30 rupees now. So that at 10 percent I will earn 3 rupees. So that means today whatever share I am holding in this company, it is worth 30 rupees. My investment is worth 30 rupees per share. So what did you do? Dividend per share divided by normal rate of return. Three rupees divided by 10 percent meaning it is 0 0.10. So, 3 upon 0 0.10 will be 30 rupees. That is the value of your equity share. Same concept for this profit also. Only thing is instead of taking dividend in the numerator you will take the profit available to the equity shareholders per share which is EPS earnings per share. So, instead of dividend it will be earnings per share 
डिवाइड बाय नॉर्मल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न दैट गिव्स यू वैल्यू ऑफ वन इक्विटी शेयर करेक्ट सो रिमेंबर दीज आर द टू मेथड्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लुक एट द प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी पार्ट और द रिटर्न अवेलेबल टू द इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स गो बाय द यील्ड मेथड अदरवाइज युअर नेट एसेट वैल्यू मेथड और द इंटेंसिक वैल्यू मेथड आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द थर्ड मेथड ऑल्सो सो दैट थर्ड मेथड इज नथिंग वट फेयर वैल्यू सो इट इज सिंपल फेयर वैल्यू इज नथिंग बट द एवरेज ऑफ द टू सो कैलकुलेट एज पर इंटरनसिक वैल्यू मेथड कैलकुलेट एज पर यील्ड मेथड प्लस द सम द टू सो दिस प्लस दिस डिवाइड बाय टू विल बी योर फेयर वैल्यू सो इफ माई इंटरनसिक वैल्यू मेथड टेल्स मी दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ इच इक्विटी शेयर इज थर्टी एज पर यील्ड मेथड आइदर डिविडेंड और प्रॉफिट वॉट एवर यू आर फॉलोइंग सपोज इफ दैट गिव्स यू से फोर्टी रुपीज पर इक्विटी शेयर सो योर फेयर वैल्यू विल बी थर्टी फाइव रुपीज थर्टी प्लस फोर्टी दैट इज सेवेंटी रुपीज डिवाइडेड बाय टू सो थर्टी फाइव रुपीज विल बी योर फेयर वैल्यू सो दिस बेसिकली काइंड ऑफ एवरेज एवरेज इज आउट द टू मेथड्स करेक्ट सो दीज आर द थ्री मेथड्स ऑफ वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर अगेन स्टिक टू द प्रिंसिपल अंडरस्टैंड वाय दीज मेथड्स आर यूज इन विच केसेस लॉजिक बिहाइंड द फॉर्म्यूला देन यू डोंट हैव टू मग अप दोज फॉर्म्यूलाज राइट सो दिस इज अबाउट युअर वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर होप आई हैव मेड दिस टॉपिक इजी फॉर यू थैंक यू